Yes, huh? Demon time, demon time, after nine, she's a vibe, yeah, demon time, yeah, that ass get the shaking, 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 and her back get the break, yeah, demon time, demon time, demon time, I killed the pussy, but she's alive, yeah, it's demon time, she's reading minds, I see the lies, it's in her eyes, go, go. her throat swallows my soul, my soul, I don't feel nothing no more, this bitch popping and popping, when she starts, she ain't stopping, and she swallowed the dick, when I nut, she swallow it, demon time, only Fans, porn hubs, strip clubs, that's what's up. She's a hustler. She Netflix and sucking dick. No shame in the game. She fucking with it. Yeah, demon time. Demon time. We started off at 69. Yeah. Now this cat got my tongue. Got my tongue. Back shots don't run. Don't run. I fuck this bitch with my gun. Three rounds and I'm done. I'm done. Demon time, demon time, after nine, she's a vibe, yeah, demon time, yeah, that ass get the shaking, 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 and her back get the breaking, yeah, demon time, demon time, demon time, I killed the pussy, but she's alive, yeah, it's demon time, she's reading minds, I see the lies, it's in her eyes, pussy listening, 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 whispering, oh my god, <laughs> Hey. Demon time, demon time, demon time. Kill the pussy, but she's alive. Hell of an intro. Yeah. I think everybody. Hell of an intro. I think I everybody. Give y'all that. I think everybody been there before. <laughs> I, think I think you had a moment in your life where you just been there before. Because I don't even know where I'm at right now. Just thoughts of cer- certain situations. Well, you better not be on demon time right now. It's no, I'm not saying. I'm talking about. Niggas in here. I'm, not, I'm talk- you talking about. I'm talking about. I'm talking about on the aspect of just remembering. Selly that time, selly time. Fuck out of anybody mess with these selly. But you're now tuned into me, 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 million dollars worth of game. We got the one, the only. Me, I like, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Nigga, I like to introduce myself. I keep telling you about that shit. I don't care what you want to introduce yourself. I go yourself. by the name we of Gilly the King. Over here. You feel what I'm saying? He go by the name of... We got a legend over here. In jail, they called him Wallow 2 Dick look, look, 7. Look, look, yeah, you spicy. That's, that's something spicy. different. That's we got a legend different. in here because... And we got the legend in the building. And I finally building. got somebody in here, right? Yeah. The legend, the one and only yeah. Rasheed Wallace. Yes. That could co-sign that this yes. fucking dude was a bum no, in basketball in Philadelphia. absolutely not. He was a fucking bum. What's wrong with you? Because listen, because he... You can ask Rash. Yeah. No, no, no. We was in high school together. No, 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 no. Get into the first. I'm, I'm get, get into I'm the first glad sponsor. This is brought to you. Yeah, whatever. This school. is brought to you by Barstool Sports. Get into the first one. That I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, We're gonna talk about when we all play ball. What the fuck? You never played. We all went to college. You, you, went, to, the, you went, went to lose a college. You, you was first team all water boy. Yeah, but we gonna get into something. <laughs> you gonna get into this shit. <laughs> Let me tell you something, right? This episode is brought to you by CBDMD. As a leader of the CBD industry, CBDMD is committed to providing high quality THC free CBD oil products. Whether you're gunning for a race in an Olympic gold medal, or you, you, you know you're trying to win a trying to win a gold medal at the Olympics, or you're just trying to stay on top of your game, CBDMD providing all the top products for you. And with so many world class professional athletes turning to CBDMD, you can be sure you're getting a safe and clean product from tinctures, topical bath bombs, even pet products. They got something for everybody. Y'all know I, I y'all know I got all the CBD at the crib. So make sure y'all get in tune with it to make it easier to discover the potential of CBD for yourself. CBDMD is offering our listeners twenty five percent off your purchase when you use the promo code Game. Once again, that's CBDMD.com. Promo code Game get twenty five percent off your order of CBD premium oils. Now, now we're gonna get right to it. you know for years you see it on Instagram. If, it's to, if the story is told by Gilly, he was this uh, hell of a Hall of Fame Philadelphia basketball player, especially you know high school. Mm. But he was you see you got three you got three I'm talking about three Philly you know basketball high school players right here. Me and she was a little bigger than him. I played for Dobbins. Uh, he the played for Benjamin Franklin. Here. She played for Simon <laughs> Gratz. Uh, it, it, okay, and just for the records, me and she went to big colleges. The, just for the records, Simon Gratz and Ben Franklin is known basketball staples in Philadelphia and Dobbins is not. So, okay, keep going. So you went to a bullshit school. All right, cool. At the end of the day, she, could you just let the people know out here that this dude was not NWACP, whatever, NWA, uh, <laughs> NWACP, I mean, NCAA <laughs> worthy. 
Division one, like, could you please tell the people, man, what black people worthy? No, I'm not <laughs> saying that. I'm saying, it, 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 you know, I, you know, it's a little, you know. What you trying to figure out from me? Was my was I nice? Was I anything I said I was? Could he would have? Could, could he make it to leave? Go back and look at the tape. That's why. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's computers. That's all you got to do. Go back and look at the tape. He's not. He's nowhere on tape. What doing you nothing, Let me no, tell you something. You no, crazy no shit. High school. Like you could pull up old daily news articles. Tessa Larry called my mama house two three times. You don't even know who Ted Solari is. Right. I know who Sonny Hill oh, is because okay. I used to play Sonny Hill League. <laughs> Man, you knew Sonny Hill because Sonny Hill is a known basketball league that's in Philadelphia. You ain't never played Sonny I played for Hill, Sonny. I was an all-star. Fuck is wrong with you? You played up uh, Camp Hill, motherfucker. You, <laughs> you was a Camp Hill all-star. Man, I went to big colleges. You, you, the, you was a Camp Hill all-star. I'm going to ask, I'm, you know, now, now we, we got an NBA legend. I'm going right into it. You had to pick a team, right? Mm-hmm. Who your team? Who for the team? Me. Who, who your who your team? Personally cheer for? No, I'm talking about. I ain't talking about no one team. I'm talking about you picking individual players from whatever leagues. I mean, whatever you know. Oh, uh, oh, oh wow, man! Shit. Um. Wow. Uh, that's that's wow. I knew LeBron on there. I knew Mike on there. Off, off the fly, for me again. Here we go. Let me move this up. <laughs> of course, I'm I'm biased, you know, because I'm a big man. So, for me, I w- I would guess if I'm picking a team, I'm gonna go big. Everybody point guard. If I had to pick a big team, it would be Magic. If I had to pick a big team at a two guard, it would be somebody like Alex English. If I had to pick a, a three, for me, I'm showing a little, again, bias and favoritism because I grew up in Philly. Doc is always going to be, for me, in my top five anything because he got me liking basketball, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And then for me, my four and five would be uh, Kareem and Wilt. That's my big team. How you going to say LeBron and Mike? We had dust y'all right little. the fuck off. We'll dust y'all off. My they top five little. would dust your top. Who's your who, who, top who, five favorite player? Who's, who's your top? Who, 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 who would you say? Who's your top five? Okay. Uh, who would you match against that team right there, I said? Oh, they got that a team, shot. Well, first of all, first of all, that team ain't got at, no okay, shooters who's your on point? that motherfucker. Who's your point? My point guard, without a doubt, is going to be. I play points sometimes. Whoever you going to name ain't too little. Mm-mm. The only because, the, the only other gonna, cat it's going it's going cancel out. It's going cancel out. The only other cat you can LeBron name as far as point. The, but he's not a point. I put Jordan at the two. I put Kobe at the three. I put Jeez. Shaq at the five. Shaq gonna dunk them niggas in the court. I don't know. I, I know. I don't know. I'm talking about a young Shaq. Okay, but I'm talking so, about the so Diesel. He, so I ain't talking about no old ass players myself. I'm yeah. talking about and they primes too. Yeah, they, if the, 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 Shaq would have huh? dunked them niggas. <laughs> hey, man, Wilt Chamberlain would have put Shaq in that bucket too, bro. But we never seen that from Wilt because Wilt was playing against niggas my height. True. True. Same thing with um, I Bill couldn't Russell. guard Wilt. True. Right. They but, was the two tallest niggas in the world at the time. <laughs> like, anybody and else then, and then a, 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 give me a, a young Lou Alcindor. What? Who, had, who got the only unstoppable shot in NBA history? That Skyhook? Man, that's cool. Shaq would have dunked him in there. Shaq would have fouled Kareem out in the first three minutes. Mm-mm. He had had four and a half fouls, man, Mm-mm. in the first three minutes, man. Come on, man. Who's your top five players of all time? Man, I, I just told you, man, I'm I'm more of a of a – I'm biased because I, I, I go with big so, men. Okay, so you saying you not picking – the real top players, you you picking your top players? Yeah, okay. who, who happen you know to be? They, but real they're not the real players. No, but you know they ain't the top five all time. Bro. Why aren't they? What? Who's so you who ain't got Mike in top? Who's better than Kareem? Mike? Ne- how? Why? LeBron? What? What makes them hold better up, than Kareem? Up. Tell them. Tell them what makes them better than Kareem. Tell me, please. I mean, Kareem got as far as the scoring title. Kareem owned that, but Kareem played for 111 years, man. It's not his fault. No, it's not. Okay, next. But what I'm saying is, Jordan was is, is, the, is the goat. What makes him the goat? Because he was the greatest he's, to ever he's, do. He's it. number one in 
one category. I give it to him. Tip my hat. Six and zero in the finals. Now that's impressive. No, 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 no. That's impressive. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Six Jordan, and zero in the wait, finals. Wait. Jordan beat niggas' asses so bad that he said, "Man, I'm tired of this shit. You niggas can't beat me, man. I gotta give you. I gotta take a break, man." This shit too easy. Won the baseball and struck the fuck out. Right. That's cool. And had to come back. Because the because these niggas not a challenge. I mean Like hey, you gotta look. understand, you know who the happiest nigga you If you wanna say Michael Jordan's the GOAT of being one of the greatest competitors to play this game, I can no, give you that. He's the killer basketball ever of all time. That's How? The great, it's the greatest basketball How? player ever of all time. He ain't, num- he ain't number one in no offensive category. He ain't number one in no defensive category. How? And then, if, and then if you want to be like, oh, because he won championship, shit. No, I just, no, no, Early, no, I just no. named you a couple guys who got more chips than because him. Because the eyeball test don't lie. I mean, yeah, okay, I'm not okay, denying that okay. Mike wasn't a great player, dog. I'm not denying that. Okay. Th- but I'm just saying top five? he wasn't, to me, he wasn't the great. Jabbar is the greatest of all time. This man been retired for damn near like 30 years or more, dog. And his numbers is still sitting up there. Because he played for 111 years. It's not my fault. The nigga was playing in this. In it's the, not the my NBA. fault. Gil, Gil, nobody, nobody living for 111 years. It's How not my fault, fam. No, he's uh, right now Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is 114. What the fuck <laughs> is he talking about? You can't play that. You know, I'm just saying. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was in fucking flicks with Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee been dead yeah, for That's why he a legend, years. though. That dude adds shit to his whole legacy. Like, he was in fucking joints with Bruce. That's So who's Lamar your top five? That's some next level shit. Can we just get this out the way? Man, it's 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 hard to say, man. It's, Yo, it's you just and Mike ever much. had any run in? As far as what? Did you have, you ever had to check Mike on the court? Uh, maybe for like a play or two. It wasn't nothing where it was like for a okay. whole game. What? No, I I was talking shit to him. What's the craziest shit, shit you ever to told somebody on the court? Huh? What's the craziest shit you, you ever told somebody on the court? Come on, you retired give, now. Give, give me the ball because I'm about to beat his motherfucking ass. Who was that? Oh, anybody. That's how I felt. So you just said, give me the ball because I'm about to beat his fucking ass? That was but the worst I, shit you said? Man, because I, I never was one to say nothing about, Nigga, oh, you yo, mom. Nigga, you all time in Wait, hold on, wait. They would have definitely wait, been, wait, wait, No, no, wait, it wasn't wait, wait, for wait, wait, another wait, wait, player, wait, though. It wasn't to another player. I never really had beef with another player. all time in technical fouls. Yep. And the worst shit you ever said to a player was, give me the ball, I'm about to beat Dog, this nigga's ass. I never had beef with another player, for real, for real, when I played in the league. My beef was always with management. My beef was always with the refs in the league. What the craziest shit you ever told a ref? <laughs> yeah, now I fucked him up. I fucked him up with this one. I fucked him up with this one. Come um, on, let's keep it real, man. I told, I told this one ref, I was like, yo, you know, if y'all keep fucking with me, I'm going to hire someone to... Um, hack y'all website because they had a direct website, you know, with uh, David Stern, a little email uh, conversations and shit, you know, directly with David Stern. And I knew about it. Now, I'm not going to tell you how I knew about it, but I knew about it. Mm. And that was one of the things I told the boy. And then <laughs> I would probably say that. And <laughs> I told this one, this one ref owned a restaurant, right? I Damn, knew about you it. Was doing, you was doing your investigation. And I was it. like, man, Y'all keep fucking with me, man. I'm going to get somebody to burn your restaurant down. Damn. Damn. Oh, shit. So that, I mean, you know, boom, bang, all right away. Bang, nigga, bang. See, you can take a nigga out of Philly. You can't Those take the Philly out of nigga. Tests, for sure. <laughs> nigga tap the ref, hey, nigga. But listen, you mean to tell me Yelly they, had, they had a special email that chain burnt down. based off of you. No, no, no. It wasn't just based off me. It was just period. It was period because you know you had a lot of big games. You know they they had certain crews refereeing. You know certain big TV games, Christmas games, right, uh, Thanksgiving games, all that stuff. So it was <laughs> it was conversation amongst them. So well, I want to know. I knew about it. How did you say it? Like, did you do like you we'll burn your fucking house? No, I was on the slide. It was like it wasn't loud. Was you like Delasandros, your restaurant? Well, on tech, that bitch gonna burn. To no, the I I didn't even <laughs> ask him the name of his restaurant. I already knew it. <laughs> I already knew it. That's what I'm so, saying. And did he tell him you? Did he say he tell him? He no, him? he gave me, he gave me a tech. But but see, that was back then. That you, for me, especially, you didn't have to give a reason why you giving me a tech. So so, how much <laughs> money total did you pay in tech fees? Oh, that I don't know. To be honest, is it in the millions? No, no, hundreds. Of I got thousands, a, right? actually, actually, I got fined. Uh, 1.2 when I got into it, I got fined. 1.2 when I got into it with a uh, 
with a certain referee. And they suspended me seven games. Why, why the fucking certain? Who's, how, he was that important? 1.2 important? It, they, I mean, at the time, that was what I was making, you know, divvied up with my contract. That's when I had first uh, signed a big contract with Portland. And um, it, it cost me for seven games, it cost me 1.2. And um, I mean, through through time, eventually I ended up, you know, getting it back. But yeah, man, that was that was the biggest, uh, I guess, fine you could say that I ever ever probably 1. got one point two million. You had to pay it. What? Oh, they all automatic off top. That's like they like Uncle Sam, fam. So what you're off saying top. is, so Damn. what you're saying is, so what you're saying is, you are in the millions then in fines. Um. Well, no, nigga, that, you that, just that, paid one point two. No, no, no that wasn't kicked, necessarily a fine. Suspended. That suspension. was more of a that was a suspension. Like well, with me getting fined, of... like text, like like it was what? All right, it started out, uh, I think like five hundred. Then they moved it up to a stack, and then they came out with the sheet Wallace Tech rule. They didn't want to say that, but that's what it was. You know, sixteen techs. Then you get suspended a game, and then each tech you get after that. It's uh, uh, another heavy or hefty fine or whatever. But for me, it wasn't about that. You're going to hear what I got to say. You know what I'm saying? If, especially if I don't say nothing, I get a tech. Oh, no. Well, then shit. I might as well go ahead and then. You're going to hear what I got to say. Then if, I'm, right. if I know I'm going to get fined, why not? Hold on for one second. Let's get into this second sponsor, right? This episode of uh, Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Cora Seltzer. Cora Seltzer isn't your average seltzer. Rooted in Cora's long history of sustainability, our brand was inspired by a generation that wants to do good in the world with a mission to restore America's rivers. Cora Seltzer is launching the world's easiest volunteer program. Whatever you're doing by simply cracking open a can of Cora Seltzer, you're volunteering. Our waterways are at risk. 80% of America's rivers are drying up through a partnership with through a partnership with Change the Course, Core Seltzer is helping to protect and restore America's rivers. Each 12-pack of Core Seltzer restores 500 gallons of fresh water to U.S. rivers and, and the communities they de that depend on them. The result, 1 billion gallons of water restored to 16 rivers basking across the U.S., and that's just in one year. Four refreshing flavors, one cool cost. Calls enjoying naturally flavored black cherry, mango, lemon, lime, and grapefruit. The specs are in. Core Seltzer is 4.5 ABV and only 90 calories. So make sure you get in tune with uh, Core Seltzer so that we can restore these rivers back with these waters for these communities that depend on them. All right? Appreciate you. For every 12-pack sold through 831-2021, Coors will... Purchase services from Change the Course to Restore 500 Gallons of Fresh Water, Fresh River Water. Details at CoraSelser.com. So go check that out and let's help restore these rivers with some water. 500 gallons. Maybe you could take it to a billion gallons, huh? All that. Oh, okay. Listen. A beast or soft? Steph Curry. Uh, and we talking about from your era. We not talking about from this era. Would the game change? We talk about if they was playing in your era, would they be? Oh, oh, soft. Okay. Um, you talking my era, soft. James Harden. My again, my era, soft. Uh, hold on for one second, y'all. Um, LeBron James. In my era. He probably, he probably would have done good because with his physical stature, with him being a little bit bigger than a majority of the rest. So he probably would have held his own, but I don't think he would have been as successful as he is now. Like, now it's, man, you know what I mean? Like, like he's doing it. Young boy doing it. You know what I mean? So, but it was a whole different era back then, bro. So, beast or soft? I I just told you a beast. Then you know I think I think he would have held his own. I can't necessarily say he would have been a beast, but I think he would have held his own. Ray Allen. Well, Ray played during the that fuck era. Did he, did, oh my god! This I, had, I just wanted to know. Person. He's in his era. Was Who's Ray Allen there? a beast or was he soft? That's no, he no. Was. Ray Allen was a monster, that's, that's, dog. They, Ray they Allen, was my game a sharpshooter. Like Kevin Durant. 
in in that era, uh, I no, I don't think he would have had too much success. Now he's he's a monster. In this area, he's a monster, dog. So you don't think Kevin Durant would have been a beast? Well, because you got to look at it. Back then, you had a lot more posting. The game was inside out. Now it's outside in. Mm -hmm. So you don't you you got guys out there that's like Rudy Gobert. They not even posting this brother up. Now, granted, he got a little bit of post moves. I mean, Just a shit, little bit, he made, though. but he made it this far though doing these little post moves. Well, who's, right. Who which one is Rudy? What team he played for? Rudy Utah. Was the first motherfucker that got Corona in the league. Fuck yeah. the league up. No, what's my what's the boy I like? The team I, uh, that was scoring all the points, scored fifty points. Oh, you talking about Rudy Tootie Fresh and Fruity ran the jail, ran the jail league? No, yeah, dude, that was playing. That he was loved my team. Rudy Tootie Fresh and Fruity nigga that ran the, the jail boat. league. Fuck out of here, he's a nut. What about uh my man? Uh, <laughs> he let jail league and score. <laughs> uh, 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 Draymond Green. <laughs> Dre, my Dre, that's, Dre, that's my young wolf, but he too little. But is he a beast mode or he's soft? In, in my era, no, I'm soft. J.R. Oh. Smith. Um, too little in, in, in my era. Mm. Got dog. You, well, you, but it was 6'4 players in your era. But but here, here's what I'm saying. Like, Look at Mike. Mike is a, a classic two guard right. at 6'4", at 6'5". Six, but these other cats, here it is now. Uh, Jr. He's a two three, but it's smaller. It was smaller players, right? You know what I'm saying? It's a whole different mindset because, like I said, you started inside out. Yo, if me and you playing, hey, all day, give me that rock right here in this post because I got a mouse in the house, and that was how it was Damn. when when I was playing. That's how we took advantage right, of mismatches. Absolutely. Now they take advantage of mismatches out of the top of the key or the wing with an ISO and you got 600 million dribbles and crossovers uh -huh. and all this shit. Dog, that's not... No, I'm going to go... Uh, foul, yep, foul 30. Yep. You're not going to sit there and stand and do that to me all damn day, dog. <laughs> the twins. I love them. My young boys. Yeah. That's right. I love them. Let's go, the twins. Yeah. That's right. For sure, I'm rocking with them, beast. I'm rocking with them. No doubt. Now, my young boys. Dwayne Wade. Now, listen. Hold on. Don't think about his outfits. We just talk about on the court. All right. You know, you might think about the way that the blue ass tight is. <laughs> um, for back then, Spicy I think, fits. I think he would have held his own, too, for the simple fact of his scoring drive. Like, he has a high presence to score. And Wade, and Wade wanted content. And, and definitely before his little knee injury. Before his knee injury, he was yeah. he reminded me of a kid named I don't know if y'all remember a young boy by the name of Randy Livingston. Yeah. Yeah. That's who he kind of sort of reminded me of. But D Wade wasn't a point. He was a two. I mean, Randy was a point, but that athleticism for a guy aside, like, yeah. He was he's he's a he one way or another, he's gonna score. Okay. Let me say this, right? So you know I know you. I know you. We've been, you know, friends for twenty plus high school. No, I know you used to, you know, throw the henny back. <laughs> <laughs> I know you was a henny man at one time, you know. Yes, sir. Um, you know, I got a lot of people that I know. Mm -hmm. And this is a this is a platform where we live our truths. No doubt, no doubt. You know, I just want to ask you something true. I heard Mary J. Blige and you was off the Henny and Mary J. Blige tried to give you some of that goddamn. <laughs> I'm just thinking. I'm just, I know I fucked you up. I know you're thinking like, man, who the fuck told him this? I'm just saying. I was just oh saying I heard Mary tried to get down. You just start laughing. Ooh. Yeah, the good old days. <laughs> the good old days. <laughs> but, but, um, yeah, man, it, that that was back then, though. That was back then, you know, a long time ago. It was uh, everybody was was kind of tipsy and drunk off of that henny. So. It, it, what, but when she was when the tipsy was drunk, did the song play? Did, was the song playing? What you gonna do without my love? Was that playing in your mind? No, it was another song playing in my mind. What was it? A, a song that was somehow involved with me that I didn't want to be part of. Mm, man. So no, it was. And, and plus, at the time, I was married, so I'm like, "Oh no!" And my wife was over there. So you giving divorced me that. now? Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm divorced. My wife was giving so me the ice grill at no. the time too. So, oh no, oh no, I'm not. Hey, back then the slogan was a happy wife or happy life. No, I ain't never been my motherfucking slogan. I mean, shit. My slogan, happy husband, we ain't fucking fussing. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's going on in this joint. <laughs> nigga come in, nigga pay the bills, <laughs> nigga put food in the refrigerator, motherfucking get the car, gas in the car, motherfucking bags, and, and it's still happy fucking wife, happy life. No, 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 the fuck is not. What the fuck is you doing? See, one thing I love about Harry's razors is this. They're outstanding. I use them all the time. They're my favorite razors. Sometimes I, can't, I find myself using a razor six or seven times. The blade is unbelievable. Five blades, man. What I'm going to do for the listeners out there right now, Harry's has a great author for, you know, for the new listeners of my show. The new U.S. customers can redeem a Harry's trial set. At only $3. I'm talking about just $3. What are you going to do with that? You go to harrys.com slash million, and they're going to take care of you. But let me show you something. See that? Look how clean it is. Look at that. Look at that. You can even hear it. Harry's is, <laughs> Harry's is outstanding. Look at that. You see all that hair? You see all that hair? Yeah. Look at that. You got these shit look like leather. Harry's is amazing. Look at that. <laughs> Ooh. And they got a leather jacket. Look, look at, at that. that. Harry's <laughs> give you a leather jacket. Harry's is fucking amazing. Harry got, yeah, Harry took you from, from. And one thing I like about Harry's, the handle was all that. You know. Harry took you from a ratchet to a leather jacket. You can see this. This is just like, it just, it just pours, just glide. It just smooth. <laughs> it hooks you up, man. I'm, look at that. Look at that smoothness. Feel you like was it. ratchet. Now you got a leather jacket. Let me see. Oh yeah, that's right, nice and soft. Yeah, that's right, like leather. That's right, like that's right, like leather. You gonna pay for that? That's cool. That was the payback. That was the payback. That was the payback. That was the payback. One thing I love, Harry's is just smooth. And one thing is about it is that. The handle is just great. I'm talking about the weighted handle. I'm talking about they're going to give you everything with the kit. You're going to get the foaming gel. You're going to get with the aloe in it. You're going to get everything. The travel cover to protect your blades while you're on the go. I'm talking about everything. But what you got to do is you got to go to Harry's. Mm -hmm. Harry's.com slash million. I'm talking about they're going to take care of you, man. These, these blades are just unbelievable. Quality German. Listen, I'm talking about engineer blades. They're unbelievable. Listen, I've been using this for a long time. This thing is why y'all see me when my head is glowing, when it's shining, my face is super clean, no bumps. These, I'm telling these five blades is something outstanding. And once again, mm. harrys.com slash millions. I'll finish this when we done. So you're going to do the rest of the show with your shit like that? Yeah. Cool. Like, like a mohawk? It yeah, like no, it's cool. Just leave he it said there. in jail he was yeah, used I mean, to having cream on his head. Because I like to hit it with the hot water, but right now... I yeah. forgot about, I ain't had no hot water, so that's another story. They used to call you uh, C-H-L up there, up to jail, creamy head low. Huh? Why would they call me that? That's a little, so they said you was that's cut, a little you, special, but it's kept cool. Catching, you kept catching, you coming out them old ass shells. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> right, man, you know let's, back, let's get back to Rosh and Mary J. Blige. <laughs> yeah, what was going on with that Mary J. Blige so, thing? Yeah, so once you laid it down, <laughs> spray it down? Yeah. Negative Ghost Rider. Oh, you never did? No, no. Oh, she was just trying to get baked. I, a I told my oh, my biggest thing. I mean, I'm not trying to end up in no yeah, song. Yeah, give me some hot water. Oh, okay. You rinse that off. And so, was it because you were scared of your wife? Because how did you like? How you not bake Mary J like in a prom? Yo, let me ask you a question before you, you get scared whole, of your wife. The whole oh, Mary, for sure. The whole Mary mm -hmm. thing. That was something crazy. How was the groupies? What I know, y'all go from city to city. Was the groupies? Did the groupies used to just be at the NBA players' hotels? Yeah, waiting for y'all. Like, like in the, in the lobby bar area. Yeah, just you act know, like you, it was random. No longer married. <laughs> No, no, I'm not married. So, did you fuck a couple groupies? Now, uh, when I was married? No. Nigga, it's not married no more. So, you can tell the truth. Yeah, I was slaying the bitches like Santa. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I say, uh, uh, like like that, no. I mean, maybe. A, maybe oh, oh, no, real talk. Real talk. Maybe a couple here and there. But you didn't, you didn't want to get caught up in that circle for the simple fact of exactly what you just said. The groupies. So we playing them on we playing the city on Tuesday. So we get there Monday night. All right, they in the lobby or if the club is popping back then, strip club or whatever. All right, they there. Boom, we play. We what city had the best strip club back then? Um, shit. I mean, Atlanta was cool. Detroit is cool. Uh, Houston was cool. I mean, shit. 
It was fun. It was fun. It was a hell of a ride. Mm. I Damn, love it. He said it was a hell of a ride. Yeah, they, yeah, they was a, he was like, it was a hell of a ride. It was, in Atlanta. Did, 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 did the group ever mess your game up? Negative. So a group he never sent you to the game was some weak, was some weak knee. Negative. Because I can't uh, mess this the also, bread up, fam. This, this also what I heard about you and another teammate on the team. Out in uh, Portland at the strip club, they said they used to call y'all the Portland Tail Blazers. Oh no! Said so y'all used to tear them bitches up. At <laughs> no, no, a negative <laughs> Ghost Rider. <laughs> Listen, I remember I was in jail. I see the article the Portland Jail Blazers. They said y'all wasn't no joke. Y'all was motherfuckers was get locked up on that team like crazy. Here's the crazy thing about it. Ain't nobody ever get locked up. Well, why they call y'all the Jail Blazers? Because at the time it was all part of that. That image, and image. it was the only thing that rhymed with trailblazers. What, what's going on? Tailblazers. With? Nah, nah, fam. <laughs> that don't Fuck rhyme. Out of here. Fuck out of here. <laughs> Bring the whole shit. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> That's crazy. But no, nah, they. I mean, looking looking at the team we had, uh, a lot of people wanted to get us out of town, but a lot of people also liked us. Mm-hmm. But I mean, nobody went to jail though. You know, we didn't have... So they just wrote a fake ass article. Well, I mean, that, that was, was just... That was just a... I mean, it was, it was oh, one ESPN, of them joints. One of them. It was, it's one of them. I, I'm not sure who started it. Yeah. yeah, me neither. I'm not sure who started it. Yeah. But, yeah, it ended up coming out, oh, Portland Jail Blazers and this and that. Oh, and, and then your man adopted it too. Um, Bill Walton and all that stuff. So, but ain't nobody go to jail though, dog. Right. That, that, so that was the thing that always mystified us about it, but... It was just because we weren't media darlings at the time. We were the only. Yeah, that was Sports Illustrated, Portland Jail Blazers. Mm-hmm. We were the only show in town in Portland. Yeah. Only professional show. Next next big city was Seattle. And, you know, they had, at the was. time, they had the Mariners. They had the Seahawks. They had the Sonics. And Portland just had the Blazers. Right. And so we were the main focus, and, and Cats wanted to. I would I would say beat writers wanted to get up out of there, mm-hmm. and so now all right. So what's the best way? Let me write something negative. Maybe one of these other big papers in another city will catch it and think I'm doing good. And boom, now I'm off. Yeah, beat writers. Yeah. No, that's why that was my whole rant with the media. That's why I stopped talking to them. Mm-hmm. If you want to print what I say, cool. But if you're gonna sit up here and make some shit up about me and my teammates and about what we're doing. No, I'm not rocking with that, dog. It was, it was, it was foul. You know, some media cats, man. They they went to the point where might be out. It, it was one black club, mm-hmm. right at the time in Portland. It was one black club, and so the guys are coming there. You know, after maybe after a game, we coming off of the road, and maybe if we get home before uh one thirty, so boom, we go in there. You know, for a little drink or whatever, and or if we hanging out in there. During the regular time we're home, say you, you come in town. Like, oh, man, Rosh, let's go to the club, whatever. Mm-hmm. All right, cool, we're going to go to the bar. They will have people in there counting our drinks. The reporter boys will be sitting outside, and it's a quick tip for the cops. Boom, yeah, um, this car looks like it's swerving. Da, da, da. As soon as we pull out from the joint, the next thing you know, whoop, whoop. But it's to be the first to get the story. Right. And But we peep game to it and all of that, so, you know. Yeah, it's some deep shit, man. Oh, man, it's a... It, it, it even get deep with the agents, man. Damn. Yes. Like, like one of my homies, you know, that I ain't going to say his name, he playing the NFL, you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, him and his agent was cool. I'm talking about kick it. I know his agent met his agent. I done kicked it with his agent a couple times. You feel what I'm saying? Cool dude. Seemed like cool. Come to find out, the agent was stealing from him. This nigga had, this nigga had mortgages and houses and shit in his name. Yep. That he like, what the fuck? I don't got no fucking house. You know. He's looking at his phone like I don't got no fucking house out there. <laughs> like, yep. but he's seeing shit come out his account. He like, wait, I don't have a fucking condo. What the fuck is going on? Yeah. So now he hired somebody else. To overlook everything that he's supposed to have been doing, yeah. Man, come to find out, man, man has stole four hundred, five hundred thousand. 
from him. Now, this way it get ugly. He found out that the agent stole the money from him, mm -hmm. right? But he had a relationship with the agent. He knew his wife, his kids. Like, the agent, him and the agent really used to kick it. That's where he fucked up at. Mm -hmm. First of all, kicking it with your agent and all that. And then he had got arrested for smoking weed. The agent? No. The, the, oh, the player. Mm -hmm. It flew under the radar. Never came out. The agent, when he fi fired the agent, the agent sent the shit to Adam Scheffner. Now the shit come out three years later. Wow. That's some hate because, shit. Because I caught you stealing money from me. You mad because I caught I didn't you. even take you to court. And, I got it, and I'm trying to save face. I didn't even take you to court or none of that. I just f fired you. And you was mad at me and sent my police report from when I got locked up that flew under the radar Gotta of the whole ass. NFL to Adam Scheffner. And that shit was on ESPN two days later. <laughs> yeah, that's some hating shit right there. So, it's a vicious game out here, man. Oh, man. All, all over money, dog. All over a green piece of paper. What's the craziest shit you, you've seen a friend or a family member do about some money? As far as coming to you, you man. Know? Well, I mean, I, I got a lot of it as far as you know. Can I borrow this amount or that amount? Um, can can you co-sign for me for this car, this house? Uh, can you open a bank account and put it in my daughter's name? You ain't got to put it in my name. <laughs> put it in my daughter's name or my son's name. With man, I done heard everything. Oh my, you know the kids need some toys for Christmas. Um, my mom's sick. Oh damn! You know the the mortgage. I'm fucked up. The mortgage is. You ready to take the house? Yeah, every I man. I heard it all, dog. I heard it all. How Everything. many stories did you pay? Um, for family. In the beginning, it was quite a few. It was quite a few because in, in the beginning, in the beginning, you have that sorry mentality, and it's hard because motherfuckers know you got money. It's like. We know Raj got fifty million, and and the fact that it was I'm only like asking for three thousand guilt for me, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? But, like, oh damn, they they damn they was at the games, and you know what I mean? This and that. So it was like, how, how much you gave away your first two years? Um, my first two years, not much. My first two years, uh, I mainly I just got myself a truck and uh, I bought my mom a crib, and that was it. So I was I was stingy, but it was. Uh, when I first signed my big contract with Portland. And the, the one thing that they always do with basketball players in the USA Today, every year they print what they make from the first dude on the team to the last dude on the team. You know, from the 20 plus million to the guy that's making the league minimum with 1.2. Right. They print it all in there. So everybody, again, like you just know said a second mean? ago, know what you're making. So, yeah, you're getting them calls. Now, when you go to these different cities, oh, I'm your cousin, remember me? And, you know, I know your mom and this and that. I'm like, all right. Mm. Well, I ain't never seen you before. Or, right. you know, when where was you at when things was fucked up, when the lights got shut off and they ain't had nothing to eat? Right. Where was you at then? I ain't right. seen none of this then. So right. that's who I pretty much looked out for, the people who looked out for me, my mom, and my brothers when I was coming up. Right. But everybody else, I mean, shit. No, y'all grown. Right? <laughs> y'all ain't my responsibility. Y'all grown. I'm responsible. Me personally, I'm responsible to take care of my mom and my brothers, my wife and my kids. That's how I felt, you know, back then at that time. What was the hardest thing about marriage for you? Um, for me, I don't know. That's a good question. Um I would have to say for me, just being away from them so much because, you know, it's, it's 41 games on the road and mm -hmm. 41 games at home. Mm -hmm. And at times you're away from your family for, you know, weeks mm -hmm. to do your job. But, you know, I, I would have to say that was the one of the hardest things or, or the thing that I hated the most was just being away from my family so much. I missed a lot of shit with my kids coming up. Right. You know, I, I was thankful to be able to catch the things I did. Right. But I wish 
back then we had these like the whole video calls or right. whatever then okay i could at least see a little bit of it but it's one thing when you there and right. you see it and i missed a lot of that man right. you know just being on the road but you know i <laughs> my son said to me one day we're all driving he got a little play he was doing right my youngest son he said all right he said, Dad, you coming to the play? I said, yeah, I'm coming. We all driving there now. So, boom, as a family, we mobbed to a school. Mm-hmm. So, they been in the back prepping, and I got to get ready to go because we got a team meeting because we about to start the season. Mm-hmm. So, boom. I'm like, oh, man. All right, boom, I had to leave. So, he finds out, you know, he comes out performing. My ex-wife was telling me, she's like, oh, he was looking for you and this and that. So, He's like this in the stands and didn't see you. And he was sad and this and that, right? So I was talking to him and he was like, well, mom, where's dad at? And she was like, son, daddy had to go. You know, he had to go work or he would have got fined $10,000. And my son hit some real shit, dog. He was like, he's like, what? He said, dad didn't want to see my play. What? I'm not, I'm not worth $10,000. And I was like, damn, when my wife told me that, I was like, damn. I was like, Man. that fucked me up right there, dog. That's hard. But but it also helped set a lot of things into perspective. Like, like, all right, I got a little smart ass kid right here who thinks about family shit, and that's what we all grew up on. Right. Mm-hmm. Shit. Thank God my fucking kids ain't said that. So fuck them like <laughs> ten thousand. Get the fucking money. What are you talking about? Hey, shit. Do me a favor. Record this little nigga singing. I'm gonna watch it later <laughs> on with you. Yeah. Yes. We'll get this fucking bag. Fuck what you talking about? But that's just me, Raj. <laughs> well, obviously, it's Raj too. That nigga. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> had, had, had to do it, man. Yeah, get up out of here. <laughs> yeah, had to do it for real. Hey, listen. Let me get into my uh, final sponsor, right? This episode is brought to you by uh, New Amsterdam Vodka. Where's my New Amsterdam? Over there. Hold on, man. You, you over here drinking my New Amsterdam? Oh, no. oh negative. <laughs> <laughs> New Amsterdam Vodka was born from uncompromising passion for great vodka. This commitment to excellence enabled New Amsterdam Vodka to produce a superb taste and unparalleled smoothness. New Amsterdam Vodka is 80 proof vodka made from the finest quality grains from America's heartland. It's distilled five times. It's filtered three times for a clean, crisp finish. New Amsterdam vodka is slightly sweet on the palate, smooth enough to drink on the rocks, mix well with any juices, sodas, or you can make a New Amsterdam mule. New Amsterdam vodka is the official vodka for bar stew sports. Shout out to the New Amsterdam queen, my wife, Tootie. You know what I'm saying? She be making all types of cocktails and sh- stuff when it. Girlfriends is over with New Amsterdam Vodka. So make sure y'all go to your local liquor store, get you some New Amsterdam Vodka ASAP. Of all times, who's the best uh, NBA player to rap? All the way up to today. Mm. And that's a good one because you own the I would, studio. I would have to say, <coughs> between. Um, I like Dame Dollars. Well, wait. Can I put myself in there? Because I did play in the G League. Leave the fuck out of here. You ain't playing in the league. I did play in the NBA G League. I did. I made the second cut. So, wait, 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 before we do. So officially. I'm going to ask you some shit about him after that. About his music shit with this guy. But I, w- I would say uh, Dame Dollars and uh, my young boy, Mon Shumpert. Shump go hard. Yeah, oh, what's up with Shaq? With a mind shump and Dame Dollar. Nah, nah. I mean, Shaq, Shaq is, is is all right, but I'm uh, no nah, Shump. Shump spit some real shit, dog. So you just Dame gonna leave, you just gonna leave the Diesel out of there? No, Diesel I mean, won platinum, man. Yeah, he did. I'm not. I'm not you knocking him for the that. Rain. It ain't because I'm cause not. The, I'm not knocking the big fella at all. Not at all. You know, he did his thing, and, and platinum is platinum. I don't like care she, what you say. Platinum is platinum. Big fella be like, she stop it. Stop it, she. Because you know, you know, I put you in a pool. She, you know, dumped on you. Oh, pl- plenty of times. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> Who didn't? Who didn't he dunk on? Huh? Who didn't he dunk on? I don't know. Man, shit. Everybody. There's not one person who. As he far as a big on, man, he dunked on everybody. As far as a big man, like a four or five. He, during his time, he played. Not one of them can say that Shaq didn't dunk on him. No, they can't. They definitely can't. I know he dunked on me. How many times he dunked on you, Bob? Uh, too many. 
trying trying to help help side coming up poster. So 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 it was a, so it was never he backed you straight down and just no I, I I never guarded him straight up as yeah. far as like like that until I got to Detroit when I was in um, Portland yeah. Big we sit here, we sit here, Shaq, tell about how you used to dunk on Rasheed Wallace for the podcast. <laughs> Actually, uh, that's not true. Oh shit! He said he ain't dunked on me quite a few times. <laughs> Trying to help with the bonus. Rasheed had that high ass turnaround fadeaway off that pick and pop. Shit, I couldn't stop that nigga either. <laughs> <laughs> Rasheed Wallace. What's good, big fella? Chill, I'm riding around. What's up? Man, same, same, sitting up here with my family doing a million dollars worth of game. game. <laughs> okay. Kill it. What's up, man? Don't be talking about Birdman like that. I'm going to do something to you, nigga. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right, Shaq. That's right, Shaq. Damn. Damn, Birdman, you got Shaq right. No, we, we, we bringing another Shaq album out. We bringing another Shaq album out. Cash Money East Coast. <laughs> All right, boy. Love y'all. All right, let's go. Man. All right, good brother. Yeah, hey, man, that's what's up, man. See, you know you're a bad motherfucker. You know you're a BMF. Yeah, Shaq, you know you're a BMF you when Shaq give you props. You're a bad motherfucker, man. No, nah, he the one. Shit, he, at, at one point, he was the best athlete on earth. Let me ask you a question. Because I, I personally, and I always say this, I say that Shaquille O'Neal was, was the most dominant player. In league history? Yes. For sure. For sure. You couldn't stop it. You couldn't like, stop it. That that All that hack-a-shack shit... Eh, ain't ain't really doing it. That's that's where the importance of like that 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 eleventh, twelfth, and thirteenth guy on your bench. Hey, you got six. All right, all right, y'all go in there just hacking, just hacking. If you don't go on, you so what? Just hacking. Put him on the foul line. That's what a lot of coaches was thinking. But man, straight up, yeah, he was. I will have to say he was the most dominant force to play in the league. Real talk. What's Especially crazy? a young Shaq. Oh, what? That's what I'm talking about. Uh, motherfucker uh, that can get it off the uh, glass and take it coast to coast and dunk on you. Young fella. When, when tip he, top shape. Hey, look, like I said, he gave me plenty of nightmares, bro, when I was in Portland. Mm. You know, he sent me home plenty of years, no matter if it was in the first round, the conference finals, whatever. He sent me home plenty of years, man. Yeah. What's the craziest shit you ever seen go down in the locker room? <laughs> who, who you slapped in the locker room? <laughs> Come on, I need this. Um, who you slap? No, I, like like I said, I never had no beef with no players. No, what, what, no the, teammates or nothing. Two other players. Uh, like, I, I need to know what's the craziest shit you ever seen go down in the locker room. Come on, see you holding back. You hoping you want to say it, but you hold back. Don't hold was, back, shit. It was the slam heard around the world. The slam heard around the world. Between Zach Randolph and Reuben Patterson. What does that mean? Reuben Patterson got slammed on his fucking hey, biscuit. So, it was crazy. Me and Bonzi. Because I know Zach was Randolph ain't get slammed. I already know. Well, listen to the story. Me and Bonzi, we was, we was the instigators. Bonzi you know, Wells. talking shit. Yeah. We talking shit to the, oh, man, you going to let him talk to you like that? So, it was pretty much like Zach. Uh, y'all remember the cat Quint- Quintel Woods yeah. jumper? Yeah. So it was the you know they always hung together and everything. So during a little inner practice stuff, Ruben had a little bit of beef with Quintel. So you know Zach, of course, taking up for his homie. So me and Bonzi, we talking shit. Yeah, man, you gonna let him talk to you like that? This and that, da da da. So then boom, we hype it up. After practice, they get the wrestling. Zach and and Ruben. They get the wrestling. Boom. So, you know, Rube was strong, dude. Went to Cincinnati, everything. That's all they do over there at Cincinnati is eat weights. So he was like, oh, oh. Zach had him, right? Made one crucial mistake and went on the side a little bit. And that's where Rube got him and slammed him. It was on that industrial carpet, you know, that real thin ass yeah, carpet awesome. with, <laughs> with that concrete right under it. Slamming, boom. Y'all remember the Madden back in the day? Zach, Zach was laying there like this. <laughs> Damn, he slams it. He's like, yo, and we was like, whoa. So he's like, everything, stop, stop, stop. And Zach was hurt for a couple of days, dog. He, like, he missed like a game or two. So I, I felt Damn, real Zach. bad. But, dog. And then, so look, it carried so, over. So Hold you up. hyped the nigga to get slammed on his biscuit. That's some Philly shit. Yeah, I did. I, I told you, me and Bonzi, we we gassed it up. 
So the, it carries over. So boom, all right, you know, Zach gets better and it carries <laughs> over to practice, right? <laughs> Y'all. So we in practice. So Rube is still beefing with Quintel. And out of nowhere, dog, Zach busts his orbital socket. Orbital socket. That was some deep shit. Dog, it took me, Bonzi, Dell Davis, Pitt, and like two of the other coaches to hold Rube back. This one we had uh, Mo Cheeks as our coach out yeah. in Portland. That whole Rube back. Rube wanted to kill him. He was like, she, I'm going to kill him. He said, I'm going to kill him. He's, I said, no, Rube, you can't kill him. I was like, think about your kids. Think about his his family. I was like, you can't kill him, Rube. I was like, plus we need both of y'all because we got the Lakers <laughs> coming up and all this shit. <laughs> you gotta so tell, I'm, you gotta, I'm, I'm trying to calm the brother down, man. <laughs> He's he trying to hey, tell a nigga about, we, we need you to guard Kobe. Like, man, Motherfucker to punch his eye all the Rube, 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 you know, like self-proclaimed this. himself the Kobe stopper. We so we was Kobe. on it. <laughs> oh, dog. That was that was the wildest thing that I've ever seen in the locker room all my years. And I I, I seen little you know little beefs, little fights like oh yeah this and that boom little fights in there. But that shit right there was crazy. I was he like, his, he, he broke his orbital bone. All this up in here, fractured all of it. He, he hit him crazy. He, su- he sucker punched him. Mm-mm-mm. I was like yo. So I, truth be told, I don't even know if if they ever came to good terms to this day. I no, you can't did. come to good terms when you wrestle with a motherfucker on agreement. Like we agreed to this wrestling shit. I picked you up, I scooped you up like <laughs> like ice cream nigga and dumped you in the bowl. <laughs> Fuck is wrong with you? Oh. And you and you just gonna punch me all in my shit while I'm not <laughs> looking. Tint my whole fucking windows and I ain't want no tent on my shit. Oh. I like riding clean, man. You done made my shit all oh. dark for no reason. I was like, we man. can never be friends. I don't I don't know if they are. I was like, man. Hey, because Zach Randolph came off as a real tough guy in the league. Yeah. So for you to sit here and tell us a nigga well, dumped him on his back, then it broke his hip bones and shit. I mean, but but Zebo, you know, Z Zebo come from a hard ass hood yeah. I, out out there in Indiana. I ain't going front. See, that's a lesson to everybody growing up. It don't matter if you come from the hood or you come from where it's good. When when it got to do with hands. And and they, they see was a nigga going on that nigga it. probably was a strong nigga from the suburbs. Picked Zebo up, showed him who was Debo, dumped him all on his fucking. No, I'm sorry, that might be. Yeah, man. I mean it, it, he did. You know, that, Z, like I said, that's all Z, Rube Z, did was eat to, weights. You could tell Zebo from the hood he got back my weight to that nigga. Ain't looking all right, yeah. line that bitch up. <laughs> nigga on a full layup. <laughs> and and everything. <laughs> All of that it was. I was like, man. did they still play on the same team after that? Yeah, well, yeah, they had to. Oh no, 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 no. We'd have, we'd have had a, we'd have had a sneaking contest. Ain't, ain't, ain't had no choice. <laughs> hey, other they, fucking you day, get, you gotta get that check for your family. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Listen, every day we would have been, been sneaking each other. We'd have been. We'd have, <laughs> he fucking came. Hey, day in practice, that nigga wouldn't have Wait been able to shoot outside. a layup. That <laughs> nigga would have been <laughs> like because. The reality of this is we agreed to the wrestling, man. Yeah. We ain't never agreed to no wrestling. I, and I worked you out a lot of times. Whoa. Well, you know, he was a, he want, he want everybody to know he was the captain of the wrestling team in jail. He wants you to know. No, actually, no, I know. They ain't had nothing to do. He just got out of the line. I just put him in the Four Nelson and shit well, like first that. First of all, you always the sneak. Crush. I put him in the chicken wing. I had his legs <laughs> up. He, he leaned on the ground. I had his legs in the chicken wing. He just dangling his body. You know what I mean? Hey, hey, get off me. I always throw him a little moves and shit. Well, first of all, he always sneak me. He don't never get me like how Zach Randolph and the bull was straight up. You said Zach made the wrong move. That's he, how you do. You no, make the wrong move. He got to sneak me. He got to sneak me from behind. He, you ain't no real. I'm going to tell you all something. Let's, let's get into uh, stories from the cell. <laughs> Rosh, you ever been locked up? Negative. The, so listen, you know, everybody know I had ball. They know I played for Penn State. So that was, you know, everybody always wanted me to ball. You know what I mean? They're like, damn, wow, I got a game ball. So, you know, I ended the summer league. I was in jail. The first summer league I ever went into. I might have played about, in this summer league, I might have played a good six minutes, right? And I realized that uh, the level of game I played was higher than the level of the game that these dudes played in jail. We playing. I'm talking about, man, you know, you – in jail, when dudes talking shit to each other, it's a little different level of, of you know, it's a little danger there. 
that's not might not be there on a <laughs> on a regular court in a regular court. Right. I, and at this time, I wasn't I, I wasn't up to date on the danger. Right. Somebody brought me up to date on the danger of of <laughs> basketball leagues in prison. So dudes get to talking this down the third. And like when you when you playing, but you don't got no refs. You got like dudes that might be refs, like official. They got referee shirts. They regular inmates like everybody else. And then and then the p it, it depend on where the fucking ref is from and who they you know what I mean. So you got you know you might be playing dude from Pittsburgh. Ref might be from there, North Philly, whatever. So, you know because we in Pennsylvania. So the ref called like some crazy shit on the dude foul with a walk. Then the third, and I could tell it got a little geographical for where the ref was from. And it was like the ref got like just imagine a person just get uh get mugged, but it was like it was like he mugged him from like just somebody under a court and get mugged to like half court. <laughs> <laughs> so my whole my whole approach to the game changed that. I said, okay, I know what play I got to do. I get the ball the next time, and just so happened, I magically sprained my ankle. You know. Uh, Magically? I magically, uh, purposely <laughs> sprang my ankle. Because I knew this shit was for me. Because I said, if a nigga mugged the ref like that, you know what I mean? I might be next. I might be next. So I said, oh, shit. I said, man, listen. No, straight up. I always was smart. See, see, this one thing about you dudes out there that don't understand about me. People say, damn, why? bitch ass nigga. Why, why, dude? I said, one thing about me, I was, a, I was a life. I was a life of the prison. I was, you know, I was a dude that... You know, the killers yeah, and shit. As soon as this some shit go down, as soon as it get popping, I get locked in. No, I was going to relocate. I knew how to relocate myself. That's who you was, nigga. No, no, no. He just said, wait. No. Nigga just mugged the ref. Give me the ball. I, I, listen, I listen, listen, listen. listen. I'm with me, it, I knew how to de-escalate the danger when I, when I seen it. When, anytime I was in view of danger, okay, I was a relocator. I knew how to relocate. <laughs> I knew what to do, he but was, he was a bitch ass nigga, right? That's all he. No, said. straight up, I'm gonna be straight up though, because a lot of dudes gonna tell you. This is what a lot of dudes gonna tell you. They was tough, you know. Dudes come home from jail around the way. Everybody tough. They come home, they got their they mask got their on. Stories. They lift some weights. They ain't got no drugs in their body. Ooh, I'm tough. I'm big. I wasn't that in jail. I was a uh, uh, in jail. Bitch I'm, ass nigga. I was entertainment in jail. All the dudes that I knew that was tough. Hey, and then, so 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 you they used to have you and just to come in, nigga, be at a cell tonight, nigga, do some comedy. No, I wasn't be that. I just, I just, you know what it was. I'm be straight up with you. When a lot of dudes in prison saw me, I had they, to make it. They your model was I had to make them laugh to save my ass. Yeah, that was a little part of it too. But <laughs> they seen the dude in jail that was giving life to the prison, like because it was so dark in there. It was dark as shit in jail, and everybody was mad. It was gloomy, and I was a dude that just wasn't mad about the situation. I just was living the dream. You know what I'm saying? Oh. In jail. Yeah, I was living the dream. The dream was... How I'm, could you live a dream I, and you ain't getting no pussy? The fucking dream is I'm getting out one day. So I was just happy all the time. And I brought life to the environment where everybody is miserable and, and, and mad as shit. I was a dude that was running around happy. Yo, what's up? I mean, talking shit to the hey, old heads. Only way you can bring life to that. That's the first time I heard that, You know why? No, straight up. Because let me tell you something. The only way you can bring life to an environment is how many, how many, how many prisoners is, was in the jail? Five thousand, so two twenty five hundred depends on. How do you bring in. life to an environment of five thousand niggas <laughs> who dicks been everybody. on the shelf? I ain't say everybody. You always five thousand niggas dicks on the shelf, niggas horny as shit. In there. I brought life to the prison. You want to? You want to? I had the whole. You know what? I had niggas happy up there. <laughs> One thing I know about you, I'm you was wild. Dying. I'm wild mo to see. You was except. dying to get taken advantage of. You wanted to go to jail and, and get your innocence taken. You all. You got a real fetish with jail Doug, and getting touched. Doug, you the one that sit here talking. About, I'm the one that brought energy to the jail. I'm the one that had no, the inmates I, I happy. Gave like, I made them smile. I, didn't say all that. I turned smiles upside. Down Same and all that shit. Shit. He wanted somebody to touch him. He wanted to get touched. <laughs> nigga ain't told me he turned frowns upside down in the prison. What the fuck? You want to get off, touched man. by OA. You love like, like, oh, oh, to talk about the OA in the jail. Hey, fuck out of here. <laughs> hey, listen, man. Well, listen. This is my brother Raj, man. You know, we've been, you know, homie since high school. Of course, he went to the legendary grads. I went to the legendary motherfucker. I went to the legendary divers. Nigga, you want the fucking Slayton Farms. <laughs> fucking lock the Slayton for Penn State. You mad because you went to Cabrini. Nobody know about you. And, and I want to say this before we leave. Because we didn't get into this. How did you... Was Gil big and Philly on rap? I just want, I want your opinion. Well, when I was in... Coming up? Yeah, was he big and Philly on rap? I'm just period that you know of. Yeah. 
See, now he's fucking biased because Rashid is from North Philly too. So <laughs> don't listen here. to what the fuck he's he got to say. I just want to say this. I just want to say this. Gil, Gil, Gil. But Gil, Gil, Gil. I got to just put this shit out there for you guys. Anybody know about him? He was a fucking neighborhood rapper. And this is what he did. <laughs> this dude talking about, yeah, I, I was, he quick to tell you I went on a world tour. You did a fucking world, a neighborhood bar tour. You ain't going no fucking arenas. Cause all he did was make flyers. Yeah, I'm going to China. I'm going. You went to fucking hole in the walls in Chicago, in New York, in D.C., in Baltimore. All he did was he was a fucking bar tour. He just went on tours and bars. You keep hyping your name. Yeah, I, right. I did a show down Kansas City. I did it. So Anybody? you say they paid him in drinks? I don't know what it is. Sometimes oh, drinks. All right, Ross, you get in on that. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> he do. He do like he do like he do like forties. He do but like Raj, things. You was a you fucking bum do? rapper. What would you rather do? A small bar tour. You you did a small bar tour and or, try to hype it up like you was going to the cities, like the whole city knew about you. A prison tour. Oh, for sure, the bar tour. Because he went from cell to cell. The fuck out! Of, ain't nobody going to no cell to cell. He, he, he went from people. cell to cell. He was in there twerking and shit. <laughs> fuck he out! Here, nigga, cells twerking. He was all in the bum ass rap. You was a neighborhood rap. You had a neighborhood song. <laughs> There's like, wow, I heard you used to rap with Gilly out there. Yeah, well, come here, nigga. Come sing something in my cell. The fuck out! Ain't nobody oh, say you, that. You, you know? should ask my cousin. Ask Tariq. You man, Tariq know about all the. Mm-hmm. All the local rappers and everything, man. Now he know he's a he fucking local. He's local first. rappers. I like he said local. You was local. First of all, I, I had the number two rap singer in the country, nigga. You can't for 17 weeks in a row, nigga. You can't be local and do that. Fuck you talking about. The group did, not you. It was no, a group. No, it wasn't no. no. It was you me, never nigga. had all this shit that you had what didn't you get around. About? Didn't get from the what South Philly. You, you live in North Philly. He live in North Philly. That shit ain't make it down to South Philly. <laughs> oh, damn. He, had, he was a neighborhood <laughs> rapper. Don't be a neighborhood rapper, young boys. Don't fucking, don't follow his lead. He was a neighborhood <laughs> He's rapper. A fucking hater. He was doing shit at all. Block parties. He count block parties and shows. Yeah, I did a block party tour. <laughs> you did a block party tour. It was kids and shit out there. You just keep going to places, grabbing a mic, put on the fly. Yeah, I did a show. You keep adding on. Yeah, I did 2,263 shows. You do block party shows. He do, he do picnics in the park out shows. Out he walk on the picnics with a speaker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you it's something. He's talking all this shit because he ran karaoke night up to prison. Don't nobody want to hear that shit. He's a bum ass rapper. <laughs> listen, yo, don't, don't be no bum ass shit. rapper like him. Don't no, it, He's hey, listen, a bum rapper. Don't be a bum ass rapper like me. And don't get locked up like this nigga and be running karaoke night up to prison <laughs> up there screaming. Keep singing, hyping. And listen, singing Whitney he, Houston. He always, I'm everyone. He always hyping his fucking joint up. It's all in me. Nobody can. Listen, none of y'all know his raps. Oh, nobody oh, knows his raps. Oh, he said you was up there like this talking about, I'm everyone. It's all all in me, anything you, you want to tell me. They, they, they tell me you something to about low, low, low. You can say whatever you want. Low, low. You can say whatever you want. You went on a goddamn bar low. tour. You's a bum rapper. Like this dude, <laughs> you don't know none of his songs, young low, boys. Do you know any low, of these boy songs? Low. No. <laughs> he's in the nigga cell. Low, ain't low, know y'all, they would think y'all would not like each other. Man. No, he's like a loser. He's a fucking he's loser. loser. Listen, on listen, listen, everything I love, on everything I love. I appreciate y'all for tuning in each and every week. He ain't got no, he's a bum. He's a fucking bum rapper. He's a bum rapper. just like that. Right!